All right, let's get real and let's call it like it is. Fundraising is a really intense and a time-consuming thing. It's no joke. And it's even worse if you aren't doing it efficiently because it can actively harm your company by pulling your focus away from the day-to-day -day operations. The goal of fundraising then shouldn't just be to get money in the bank. It should be to run an efficient process. You wanna raise money that you need from the investors who can help your company the most in the most productive way humanly possible. In this lesson, we're gonna run through the first key decisions that you have to make in the fundraising process. And these questions apply whether you're raising a seed round from friends and family or an institutional round from big VC firms. They are, when should I raise money? And how much of it should I raise? Let's zoom in on the first one, when to raise money. You ready? Let's do it. Okay, so to figure out when to raise money, there's really one main factor you need to consider above all others, your cash runway. How much money do you have left and how fast are you spending it? Let's say, for example, you're a couple steps in, you've raised one or two rounds of early stage funding, and you've got, let's say, $500,000 left in the bank. But you also know that your burn rate, or the rate at which you're spending money, is $50,000 a month. That's for salaries, office space, everything. So simple math. We take the $500,000 that we have in the bank and divide it by the $50,000 a month, and voila, you're looking at 10 months of burn before you've officially run out of runway. By the way, Carta has a burn rate calculator, so if you want to use it, the link's right down there. So as a founder, you're thinking, I got 10 months of runway left, right? Now, in a second, we're going to start talking about some general rules around when to raise and how long it typically takes. But before we do that, there's one other important thing you got to know. If you're thinking about raising money soon because cash is tight and you're going to run out of runway, then I hate to tell you this, but you're doing it all wrong. That's because the time to start thinking about raising money isn't when you're starting to run low on cash. As a founder, you should always be thinking about fundraising. The successful founders we work with are always thinking about their next fundraise, and they always are having conversations with current investors and potential investors going in on the background of their day-to-day -day operations of the company and other logistics. They just make it part of their regular jobs. So yeah, always be thinking about your next raise. And now that we got that out of the way, Let's talk about metrics. As a general rule of thumb, based on Carta data, it takes roughly three to six months from the start of pitching investors to get money in the bank. And for venture rounds, it's even longer. That said, every company is obviously different. Some founders raise faster than others. Again, we're talking rough metrics here, and it's based on our data. But to be on the safe side, you should always start pitching investors at least six months before your runway is going to end, and probably closer to 12 months, honestly. So that's when to raise. Now, let's talk about the question most people care way more about, and that's how much money should you raise? Right away, let me just say this. While we do have useful data here at Carta, in general, how much I should raise is a hard question to answer. It just depends so much on your startup, your development, and your goals over the next two years. Not to mention all the other factors like state of the market, blah, blah, blah. So the simplest answer to the question is you should only ever raise as much money as you need to get to the next phase of your company's growth. But that's no fun, right? The fun part is the numbers. What are the numbers? So. With all the disclaimers out of the way, let's now dig into our data here at Carta and see what the numbers tell us. In general, there are two frameworks that we're gonna run our data through. The first is, how much money are other startups raising? And the second, what are your specific milestones and how much money do you need to hit them? So let's look at the first one. How much money are other startups raising? So these are some overall numbers and shameless plug, if you use Carta, you can break this data down even further by industry, etc. But in general, here's what we're looking at. 
For seed rounds, companies generally raise about $3 million. And when you get to a Series A, that number takes a jump to roughly 9.6 million on average. Series B, you're looking at 15.1 million. Series C, 23.2 million. And by the time you get to your Series D, you're on average raising around 36 million bucks. But again, this is just the first framework. This data is useful, but it doesn't drill down into your specific company's situation. Which brings us to framework two. How much money does your company need to reach the next level? Two factors you wanna consider when thinking about this, your target milestones and the money it's gonna take for you to reach those milestones. So let's look at each one. First up, your target milestones. Basically, you should be thinking about each funding round as the fuel that's gonna move your company from your current stage to the next one, right? And when you define what that next stage is, you wanna make it all about concrete, achievable goals you're trying to hit in the next X amount of time. Now, according to our data, two or three years is pretty normal amount of time between funding rounds. So in that time window, you gotta ask yourself, what business goals am I trying to achieve? For a lot of companies we work with, it could be completing the next more advanced version of your product. For others, it could be all about customer acquisition, i.e. you may set a goal to add your next thousand or 2000 new customers or what have you. And for companies, it might be partnerships, like opening up a new sales channel by partnering with another major company. Point is, for each founder and company, the definition of the next stage is gonna be different. But what's never different is the importance of having absolute clarity on what next stage means for you. Because believe me, when you talk to a VC, you can be sure they're gonna to wanna to know exactly where and what their money is being used for. Okay, so you know your milestones and you know you gotta figure out the second thing, what it's gonna to take to get there. How much money will you need to achieve that milestone? This is exactly where you determine what your company needs in terms of people, technology, and anything else to get to that next level. For example, how many engineers, marketers, salespeople, or customer support reps do you need to reach that next milestone you defined? How much will it cost to buy the right tech and equipment and rent the office space? How much do you need to spend to build a website, create social media strategy, run ads, set up different distribution channels? With this analysis, you'll actually have a surprisingly great sense of how much cash it's gonna take for you to reach your next milestone. But okay, curveball. Because there's one more key variable you're gonna wanna consider in all of this, and that is your ideal valuation. And here's what I mean by that. As soon as you raise money, you're agreeing to give away ownership, right? So you gotta do this kind of balancing act between two things. One, your need for cash, and two, how raising this cash is gonna affect the equity and ownership percentage of all the current stakeholders in the business, which, spoiler alert, includes you. Your valuation is essentially the fulcrum or the lever upon which this trade-off is gonna happen. So like always, let's look at the numbers. Based on our data here at Carta from Q2 of 2023, in the seed rounds, most founders sell around 20% of the company's equity to investors. And then at Series A, on average, founders sell around 19%. Knowing this kind of stuff can be a real advantage at the bargaining table. When you're working with VCs, they're gonna learn how much you're raising and automatically start to do a bunch of math in their heads, purely because they know what the average dilution is for different types of rounds. Basically, what this means is, it's really helpful for you, the founder, to know what percentage of your company VCs are going to expect. In our experience here at Carta, for a $1 million seed round, investors are generally gonna expect to get 20% of the company, which if we do a little math here, we're gonna solve for a valuation of the company. And this deal puts the company at an official valuation of $5 million. Having this general framework in your head before you even start fundraising is really gonna help to align your expectations with reality. Now. That obviously doesn't mean you're gonna get the exact offer you want. Case in point, 
Here's one perspective on evaluating funding offers from a webinar that we did with our friend Cody Barbo, founder of the estate planning startup Trust and Will, which has raised more than $50 million over several rounds. Sometimes it's take what you can get. I, like, I sincerely mean that. In the earliest days of Trust Small, we have great investors, but like, it is still sometimes take what you can get. At the, the round size that comes together isn't how much you want it to raise. The valuation that comes forward isn't what the valuation you wanted it is. And that's even some people feel that way about YC or Techstars because they take, I think, like six, six percent for Techstars, and I think seven or seven and a half now for YC. It's like, if you make it this far, like where we're at at Trust Small, I don't think about that. Either. Like, I, I have I have a great salary that I'm able to provide for my family. My, my co founders and most of our early team members have very healthy positions on the cap table. We have two board seats. My, my co founder and I have two of the five board seats at the board level. So we represent the common shareholders. So, yeah. You can see every fundraise is different. And depending on your situation, you may have to give and take on certain points in the negotiation. But, you know, shameless plug, Carta does have a lot of tools to help you figure out all that stuff. We got scenario modeling and performa tools that you can use to plug in different variables and model out how your round's gonna look, et cetera. So yeah, essentially having the right data and the right tools is a big factor in reaching your goals. All right, how you doing? You still with me? You now know when to raise money. You know your milestones and you know how much you want to raise based on the goals and your valuation targets you're going after. Now it's time for the fun part, the real nuts and bolts of startup fundraising. In the next few lessons, we're gonna learn how early stage deals actually work and how much they cost. You ready? Hit that button right down there and let's do it.